Becoming a parent is wonderful. I envy you. My husband laughed and playfully patted my sister's shoulder. Our one-month-old nephew, cradled in my sister's arms, looked up at us and cooed happily. Seeing this heartwarming scene, I was about to offer my congratulations when... Wait, you're this baby's dad, right? Startled, I turned around to find my four-year-old niece looking curiously at my husband. Her innocent gaze held him in place and he remained frozen, still smiling. In that frozen moment, the air seemed to thicken, and my father-in-law, standing next to me, flushed with anger. My name is Lillian, a 31-year-old homemaker. I've been married to my 34-year-old husband, Caleb, for three years, and we live together as a couple. Although we haven't been blessed with children, I've found fulfillment in our daily life. Lillian, I brought some homegrown vegetables. On a weekday afternoon, my father-in-law visited our home with an abundance of fresh vegetables. I have a close relationship with my in-laws. We've even traveled together as a family of six, myself, Caleb, and both sets of parents. Their farming background means they often drop by for a chat. However, despite our close ties, not everyone in our family gets along with my in-laws. By the way, how's your sister? I haven't seen her around. Well, I haven't been in touch with Bella lately, but I assume she's doing well. I replied, furrowing my brow, sensing my father-in-law's concern. Bella, my younger sister by two years, has always been distant from our family. While my parents and in-laws have formed close bonds, Bella seems to avoid us. Our relationship has been strained since childhood. It's not fair. You always side with my big sister. Although I wasn't intentionally favored, Bella often accused me of doing so. Even as adults, she harbored a sense of rivalry toward me. After all, we're sisters. I wish we could be closer. Despite my desire for a better relationship, I hadn't found a solution. And at that moment, I carried another significant worry, one beyond Bella's behavior. One evening, while Caleb was in the bath, I attempted to hang up his coat that he had left lying around. With a clatter, his phone tumbled out of the coat pocket and fell to the floor. Worried it might be broken, I quickly picked up the phone. As the screen lit up along with a notification sound, I read the message displayed there. Today was fun. Let's keep meeting without anyone finding out. The message had a heart next to it, and the icon showed what appeared to be a woman's necklace. I let out a heavy sigh. You see, my other concern was my relationship with Caleb. While he was kind and gentle during our courtship, after marriage, his true nature began to emerge. Caleb was quite the ladies' man. No matter how much I warned him to stop. There's nothing suspicious going on. We're just having meals together. He continued to maintain contact with numerous women, ignoring my pleas. His explanations were dubious, but without concrete evidence, I lived with this constant unease. How many times has this happened now? Trembling with anger, I checked the message again, but Caleb had likely changed some settings. There was no name associated with the sender. However, the icon caught my attention. Wait, have I seen this somewhere before? 
Hey! What are you looking at? Caleb, fresh out of the bath, snatched the phone from my hand. You! Messaging other women again. How many times have I asked you to stop? Shut up. It's my business. His face flushed with anger. Caleb grabbed the nearby remote control and hurled it at me. It wasn't the first time I'd considered the option of divorce due to his behavior. But thinking of my close relationship with my in-laws, I couldn't make that decision easily. I don't want to hurt my father-in-law and mother-in-law. In the end, all I could do was watch Caleb's unhappy figure retreat to the bedroom. Then, one day, my mother contacted me. Bella, my sister, had given birth to her second child, a baby boy named Theo. Bella hadn't returned home yet and was resting with the children at our parents' house. My mother suggested that Caleb and his parents join me in visiting Bella and the baby. Delighted, I accepted the invitation. When we arrived at my parents' home, my mother welcomed us warmly, but Bella's expression tightened as soon as she saw me. You didn't have to come, you know. Well, don't say that. Let me see Theo too. Reluctantly, Bella showed me the baby she was holding. Theo looked up at me with curiosity and innocently reached out his hand. What a cute little boy! Caleb nodded in agreement with his father's words. Being a parent is wonderful! I envy you! Caleb seemed genuinely happy as he smiled and lightly patted Bella's shoulder. Just as I was about to offer my congratulations. Wait, aren't you a baby's dad right here? Startled, I turned around to find my four-year-old niece, Maria, standing there. Her gaze remained fixed on Caleb. What? No way. Maria, he's your little brother. I can't be his dad. Despite his gentle protest, Maria continued to stare at him, leaving Caleb frozen with a smile. In that frozen moment, it was my father-in-law who regained his composure first. What on earth is going on here? His face turned crimson as he confronted Caleb. Bella, looking flustered, tried to calm her father down. Oh, come on. It's just a child's joke. Maria, don't say strange things. Caleb chimed in. Yeah, don't take it seriously, Dad. And patted his father's back to soothe him. Well, I suppose. Maria continued to gaze at Caleb, seemingly convinced by their explanations. My father-in-law sighed in relief. However, I harbored secret suspicions. Maria's casual joke didn't sit right with me. Maria had an unusual ability. Once, she had told me, You should go to the hospital. Persistently, she had urged me to seek medical attention. Curious, I went to the hospital and discovered a small tumor in my stomach. And when my cat went missing, Maria had accurately pinpointed its location. Even Bella, her own mother, hadn't noticed. I refrained from mentioning Maria's abilities, not wanting to upset my in-laws. Back home, Caleb's mood seemed sour. He scowled and muttered. What's up with Maria? She's so rude. It's creepy. As Caleb continued to badmouth Maria, 
my distrust of him grew stronger. Then, in that moment, I remembered the message I had seen on Caleb's phone recently, and it hit me. At the time, I couldn't recall it clearly, but the necklace icon in that message belonged to Bella, the same one she often wore. And Maria's words. It was becoming increasingly clear that something was amiss between Bella and Caleb. I clenched my fists. While I knew Caleb was a ladies' man, I never expected him to pursue my own sister. I had tried to maintain a friendly relationship with Bella, but I wasn't naive enough to accept this betrayal. They're making a fool out of me. Both of them need to reflect. Trembling with anger, I vowed revenge against Caleb and Bella. A few days later, I decided to visit Maria right away. When I proposed the idea, Bella hesitated briefly but changed her attitude when I mentioned looking after her children. Well then, take good care of Maria and Theo. As soon as I arrived, Bella had dressed up and hurriedly left the house. I didn't know where she was going, but it worked out well for me. Maria, can I ask you something? Maria, playing with her toys, tilted her head at my voice. Sure. What is it? Do you know who Theo's dad is? Contrary to my nervousness, Maria smiled and answered. Theo's dad is the man who came with you the other day. Maria's dad isn't Theo's father? Nope. It's not a lie. Her beaming smile confirmed that I hadn't misheard her. Now I just needed to set the stage for the ultimate confrontation. A few days later, I gathered my parents, in-laws, Bella, and her husband at our home, waiting for Caleb's return. Clearly surprised to find everyone assembled, Caleb's eyes widened. What's going on? Why is everyone here? I don't know either. No one would tell me anything. Caleb hesitated, attempting to escape, while Bella leaned forward, urging him on. But everyone remained silent. Frustrated, I pulled out a recorder and took a deep breath. Caleb, Bella. I already know about your inappropriate relationship. Ha! Huh? What are you talking about? This makes no sense. Despite the situation, they continued to feign ignorance. Listen to this. Anticipating their evasiveness, I played a recording. It was the conversation I'd had with Maria the other day. Her clear assertion that Theo's father was Caleb left both him and Bella scowling. I then explained Maria's mysterious abilities, which I had kept secret until now. So, even these words might be true, right? I stared at the two of them. Of course, they would face consequences, but if they confessed now, I might consider what happens next. Huh? Mysterious powers? There's no way something like that exists. Are you seriously falling for a child's joke? Are you an idiot? But to my surprise, Caleb and Bella burst into laughter. Their lack of remorse pushed me to my limit. I had hoped they would at least apologize voluntarily, but it seemed they were determined to stick to their lies. Well, if you're so sure, then I have something for you to see. I pulled out a document from my bag and thrust it in front of them. They peered at it, still chuckling, but their expressions froze when they read its contents. This is... 
I glared at Caleb as he gasped in shock. The document was the result of a DNA test for Theo, Bella, and Caleb. I believed in Maria's mysterious abilities, but as evidence of infidelity, it felt weak. So, I discreetly obtained hair samples from Bella and Theo, and had all three of their DNAs tested. The results confirmed that they were parent and child, just as Maria had claimed. Theo's father wasn't Bella's husband, it was Caleb. Now, how do you plan to justify this? My words left Caleb and Bella pale, realizing they couldn't escape anymore. But it was my father-in-law who sighed heavily. Before Caleb arrived, I had shown all the evidence to my parents, in-laws, and Bella's husband. Despite his initial anger, my father-in-law had agreed to wait for their confession. Lillian gave you a chance, and this is how you repay her? You... He stood up and slowly approached Caleb. Dad! What do you intend by hurting Lillian like this? You shameless fool! In the next moment, my father-in-law swung his right hand forcefully, striking Caleb's cheek. Why did you get into such a relationship? Explain everything! My father-in-law glared at the two of them with an intense expression. Caleb, visibly shaken by his imposing presence, hastily began confessing the whole story. As it turns out, their affair began right before my wedding to Caleb, during a family gathering. Apparently, Caleb, notorious for his womanizing ways, and Bella, who wanted anything she could take from me, found common ground. They continued this secret relationship for three years, which eventually led to the events unfolding now. Honestly, it was just a momentary lapse. Well, I feel sorry about it. Caleb tried to defend himself with a swollen cheek, while Bella half-heartedly apologized. But at this point, their words held no weight. I couldn't forgive them. We're getting a divorce. And I'll be claiming alimony, so be prepared. Oh, no! My stern words left both of them pale, their shoulders slumping in defeat. Afterward, Caleb and I managed to part ways. Bella's husband also served her divorce papers, and she lost custody of Theo. Of course, we pursued alimony diligently, and together, Caleb and Bella ended up with a combined debt of $60,000. Desperate, they pleaded with their parents, but forgiveness was out of reach, and they were cut off. In the end, Caleb and Bella separated bitterly, and now they work tirelessly day and night to repay their debts. On the other hand, I maintain a good relationship with my in-laws and Maria. From now on, I'll walk a new path for myself. How did you like this story? Please consider subscribing to the channel. See you in the next video.